we all we're all back and I apologize. I apologize for the delay we ran over in our committee meetings and so we had to have a quick recess and now we will go into our city council legislative work session. I'll call to order the city of Douglasville's legislative work session for today which is October the 15th. Our invocation will be done by Pastor Angelica or Angelique Pounds for the Disciples Pastor of the Church at Chapel Hill. Good to see you. Thank you so much for coming. After the invocation, our Pledge of Allegiance will be done by the Mayor Pro Tem, Councilmember Terry Miller. Please stand for the invocation. Mayor, city members, I am going to offer a prayer for our invocation. Father, we thank you for the privilege of leadership and the responsibility of guidance and direction. We ask your wisdom, clarity, insight, understanding, perspective, all these items essential, Father, to make wise decisions now for the community's well-being and their guidance and protection later. Unite this team, give them one heart, one voice, one sound, one mind, so that we can advance your kingdom purposes here in local government. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you so much, Mayor Pro Tem, and we appreciate Pastor Pounds you coming in. You're related to the sheriff. Yes. Everyone's related. All the Pounds are related. That's <laughs> he's a great guy. Thank you so much for coming. We appreciate it. We'll go over our announcements and presentation for the evening before we get into uh, the agenda that is printed. If you need an agenda, there is one on the screen electronically, or there are some that are printed outside on the desk. I'd like to welcome you to the City of Douglasville's City Council meeting. Uh, this is our legislative work session. We will not take action on these items. They're just here for um, discussion this evening, and we'll take action on Monday. Uh, today, today's meeting is being conducted in whole or in part by teleconference. Um, all of the elected officials are here this evening, but there may be some individuals that are on the agenda or those wishing to comment during public hearing or comments from citizens and delegates that will be allowed to do so via audio on Zoom software if they're not here in present, um, in person. This open meeting of the Douglasville Mayor and Council is being conducted by teleconference consistent with the official code of Georgia annotated section 50-141G due to emergency conditions uh, involving public safety in order to mitigate the transmission of the coronavirus and to reduce the risk of COVID-19 illness. That code section, which you can find posted with agenda materials for this meeting, allows local governments to meet in whole or in part by teleconference in the event of emergency, so long as means are afforded to the public to have simultaneous access to the teleconference meeting. For this meeting, we're convening partially by Zoom software as shown on the city's website, describing how the public may join, which is via YouTube media platform. This is a work session where agenda items are presented for discussion and no official action will be taken this evening. As I've said, it will be done on Monday. If the business you're here for is not listed as an agenda item, there will be ample time under the agenda item, comments from citizens and delegates section to discuss our business or your business. There are just a few protocol items I'll go over and then we'll get right into the meeting. I would ask that you would please keep your comments and presentations on a professional level dealing with the facts that are important for this governing body to make our decisions. We will not accept comments that are considered by the chair to be a personal attack on any individual or group of individuals. You'll receive a warning from the chair and if you deviate from this requirement the first time, a second deviation will result in a request for you uh, to not continue to speak. Only one person speaking at a time, please. Please do not applaud or react uh, to the speaker, speak to the audience cheer or carry on a conversation, we ask that you would just make all of your comments directed to the chair of that committee. I remind you that we're only required to accept public comments during required public hearings. And if you have a cell phone, iPad, electronic device, please put those in silent mode or power those off until the meeting is over so that they will not be disruptive. 
Now this is how the agenda items will go and the meeting will uh, take place. The agenda items will be handled by the committee chairperson. That person will read the agenda item and then that person uh, or persons representing the agenda item or applicant will make his or her presentation. Um, and this will be your opportunity to present your information. Myself and council members will possibly ask questions to help us make our decision uh, next Monday. After that, the committee chairperson will ask for comments or statements from the audience. There is a maximum time of 20 minutes per agenda item um, and 20 minutes for those in favor, 20 minutes for those in opposition, and each person has five minutes to speak. Prior to approaching the podium, please give your name and address for the record. Um, if you don't have the card before you come, uh, you have, should, have, should have filled out a card and hand it to the city clerk. Uh, Ms. Vicki Acker is in the rear to my right. Uh, minors are not uh, required to give their name and address, but everyone else, we ask that you would give your name and address for the record. Each person has one opportunity to speak. This meeting is not a question and answer. Its format is just here for us. No, we're not debating. We would just like for you to present your information. We'll take it into consideration to help us make our decision next week. Um, and please address, again, all your comments to the chair. And if you have anything that's printed, we ask that you would please give that information to the city clerk as well. All right, I've done a whole lot of talking, giving you information to help us run the meeting this evening. Now I would go to the agenda that is printed, and uh, the first committee is Economic Development Committee, and that's chaired by Mayor Pro Tem Terry Miller. Thank you, Madam Mayor. We have no business at this time under the Economic Development Committee. Thank you so much, sir. We'll move on then to Finance Committee, and that's chaired by Council Member Mark Adams. Thank you, Madam Mayor. You're we welcome. have two items tonight. Mm -hmm. Item A is authorize the mayor to sign a construction contract with Albion Scalcia. Enterprises LLC for design and construction of the 8578 Club Drive renovation project. Uh, Mr. Thompson was here in our five o'clock committee's meeting and he is here now to answer any questions. This had been uh, discussed briefly. If there are additional questions or any additional information, Mr. Marcus Thompson, that you would like to provide, please let us know. Marcus Thompson, 6701 Church Street. There is no additional information to provide at this, at this moment. I understand that uh, the uh, the bids have been put out, the bid has come in, and you all have um, decided upon this particular company to do the project, and we will take that up on Monday night for a vote, unless there are other comments or questions. Anyone have any comment or question, public question or comment? Seeing none, then we will move along to the other item. Thank you, Mr. Thompson. Item B, authorize the mayor to sign an agreement with the Erosion Con Company, LLC, for soil erosion abatement at the Town Green work site. Mr. Thompson? Good evening again. Marcus Thompson, 6701 Church Street, project manager. All right, so staff is looking to bring the Erosion Company back out to the Town Green site to perform a few site maintenance services to address the cup a couple of observations shown on contours, engineering, stormwater, pollution inspection report. Uh, some of the concerns were the formation of gullies at the construction entrance and rills along the slope areas north of the site where there is low grass density. Um, the concerns are the result of past heavy rainfall events. Uh, are there any questions? Council, Madam Mayor, any question or comment? I do, Mr. Chairman. Go ahead, Madam Mayor. Uh, thank you so much. So, Mr. Thompson, this was not initially in the, uh, the scope of work, but because we've had a lot of rain, excess rain now has created an issue and we have to go back yep. and have soiling erosion done now yes, to yes, help mitigate some of the water issues on that site. Yes, ma'am. Okay, I was just trying to make sure I had that in my head properly. Thank you. Thank Mr. you, Madam Mayor. Mayor. Yes, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem. Here. Thank you. Um, quick question, is, is any of the erosion occurring, is it contained on the site or is it affecting the properties adjacent? Uh, for now it's contained on site. Yep. So the cemetery or the, or it's south of Bell no, sir. Okay. I just thank you. That's all, Mr. Chairman. Any others? Uh, if you have looked at your at the agreement, it's a very minimal amount of money for for what they are being requested to do in order to mitigate any problem that may occur. So, if, if there's no one in an objection to that, I'd like to place this on the consent agenda for Monday. Thank you, Madam Mayor. That's all that we have tonight under finance. 
Thank you so much, Mr. Chair. Thank you so much, Mr. Thompson. Thank you, guys. You're welcome. We'll move on then to um, Housing and Community Affairs Committee. That's chaired by Councilmember Dr. LaShawn Burdanley. Thank you, Madam Mayor. There's You're no welcome. business tonight. Thank you, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Item eight, which is Legislative and Intergovernmental Committee. That's chaired by Councilmember Samuel Davis. As I said, Madam Mayor, no business. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you so much, Councilman Davis. We'll move on to item number nine, which is Personnel and Organization Committee. That's chaired by Councilmember Chris Watts. Thank you, Madam Mayor. We have uh, three items tonight. Item A is to adopt a resolution providing for one-time special holiday season payments to the City of Douglasville employees, Ms. Alston Bing. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening again, Madam Mayor and Council. Tia Alston Bing, 6695 Church Street human resources. Um, item A is our uh, annual resolution that we bring uh, before you as it relates to holiday bonuses. Um, this is for uh, all eligible employees. There is criteria um, to receive this holiday bonus. I think I know it by heart, so I'm going to say it. Um, in order to be eligible, you have to be a full-time employee uh, six months as of December 1st in order to receive the $300 bonus. Um, also, as a full time employee that has been here three months as of December 1st, they would receive $150. And then part-time employees have to be here six months as of December 1st, and they would also receive $150. We will work with the finance department to determine the pay date uh, for this holiday bonus, and it is in the budget. If you have any questions, I'll take those. Ms. Ms. Bang, um, how many years in a row have we, or how, how long have we been doing this for our employees? Oh my, I'll defer to my boss and let her answer that. <laughs> and I'll defer to Ms. Littlefield and Mr. Dotson, because they've been here longer than me. Long time. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you for that answer. Uh, that's, I just was curious, but I just like the fact that we take any care many of our moves, folks. sounds like. <laughs> um, <clears throat> any questions or comments? Okay. Thank uh, you, Mr. Thank Chairman. you, Ms. Halston Bing. Our employees um, will be happy with that. Thank you. And uh, item B is adopt an ordinance to authorize the city to repurchase up to 32 hours of public health leave from each eligible employee. We discussed this in committee. Uh, Ms. Bing, you have uh, anything to add or say? For the record, Mr. Chairman, um, this ordinance uh, before you is a recommendation um, to provide employees the opportunity to sell back the uh, city provided public health leave. Um, all employees are eligible uh, for this buyback. Uh, the criteria is 16 hour balance and the employee can sell up to 32 hours. Uh, we'll also work with finance to provide um, a payment date for that buyback if you so approve. Any other questions, I can take those. Thank you. Any, anybody have any questions we didn't ask about in the committees? Okay, uh, yes. Uh, Mr. Chair, I just wanted to point out, just for the record, in case uh, you all are, um, are asked, uh, just like Ms. Olson Bing mentioned, your holiday bonus pay was included in this year's uh, budget. The public health leave would be taken care of by the CARES Act funding. So there are other um, personnel um, increases that you all have that are currently budgeted. We were able to keep those in the budget and not have to have those removed due to um, hiring freezes as well as certain things that we removed from the budget. So your employees will be able to receive, based on your recommendations, all um, incentives that you plan right. typically throughout the year. That's great. Um, anybody? Yes, Madam Mayor. Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman and City Manager. I know we I ask this all the time, and you all are great to give me the responses. But our the 32 or so folks that we had furloughed, which were some of those departments that weren't um, that we didn't have a lot of activity in during the beginning of uh, COVID and the pandemic, in parks and 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 so forth. We've been able to bring most of those people back, right? I think maybe one person out of those or two. Yes, ma'am. We brought um, out of the 25 that were initially on the list, we brought back um, 23 employees. Thank you so much. Okay. Yes, Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Anybody else? I forgot to ask, but uh, item A and B, I'd like to place on consent agenda if, if that's appropriate. Everybody okay with that? All right. Thank you. Okay. And. Um, uh, thank you, Ms. Bing. Uh, item C is authorize the mayor to sign a ho hold harmless agreement with Continental American Insurance Company to ensure confidentiality of employee information transferred through ADP for employee coverage for AFLAC group voluntary insurance. And uh, Ms. Ch Champagne, go ahead. 
Good afternoon, Madam Mayor, members of Council, Talisha Champagne, Human Resources Department, 6695 Church Street. Um, I would like to share that one of um, our goals here in Human Resources is to streamline and to make the benefit eligibility and enrollment process as easy for employees as, as, as we can make it. Um, this year, we found that ADP has expanded its services, which allowed us the ability to be able to add AFLAC Insurance Group as one of the carriers in which we're able to actually set up carrier connections. So this whole harmless agreement, it really is more so um, AFLAC's way of just saying, because we have ADP as a third party vendor, it allows us the ability to be able to protect the information that employees are enrolling in when they enroll in their benefit plan in ADP as we're transmitting that information over to AFLAC. Okay, thank you. Uh, anybody have any questions or comments? All right. Um, if it's okay, we'll place this on the consent agenda also for Monday. All right, clean sweep. Thank you very much, ladies. <laughs> Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Human Resources Department. We'll move on then to item number 10, which is Planning and Development Committee. That's chaired by Councilmember Mark Adams. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Under Planning and Development Committee tonight, we have a lot. Of I know, to I see. Oh, my goodness. <clears throat> um, this is almost the whole you, alphabet. So, so, as a preface to this part, for those of you who are hoping to be at home by 8 to watch the Braves play, <laughs> we'll see. That's all I can say. Um, <laughs> let's get started. We'll start with item A, hold a public hearing and consider a request for a change in zoning from RA Residential Agricultural District in the county to LI Light Industrial District in the city for 8.164 acres at 1706 Blairs Bridge Road in Landlot 672, District 18, Section 2, Parcel 3. Application by Republic Property Company Incorporated. And Ms. Patrice Williams is going to present us with that. Patrice Williams, Community Development Director, 6701 Church Street. Uh, the proposed amendment would be consistent with the purpose and intent of the UDO as stated under Article 1. The applicant requests a rezoning under the City of Douglas Hill Unified Development Ordinance, Section 12.0805. <coughs> Granting the approval of the applicant's request would be an orderly and beneficial development. The annexation and the rezoning of the property are consistent with the existing and planned development in the area. The rezoning will further the purpose of the conference of plan. If the annexation is successful, the subject property would be annexed into a regional activity center character area. The rezoning of the property would be compatible with the character area goal of providing for an area that can support high intensity of development, which serves a regional market. Rezoning this land from RA County to LA to LI City would adequately address new or changing conditions in the area. There are many light industrial type uses in the vicinity of the subject property and the character of the existing area is predominantly light industrial. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Williams. Uh, is there someone here representing the application that would like to make a presentation? The applicants are with us uh, tonight. Please come forward, folks. And uh, if you would identify yourselves, name and address for the record, we'd love to hear from you. And of course, the rules that our mayor have uh, given uh, up front apply. So we uh, look forward to your presentation. Good evening, Madam Mayor and members of the City Council. My name is Melissa Perignat. I'm with the firm of Holton A. Zadkoff and Wasserman. Address is 100 Galleria Parkway, Suite 1800, Atlanta, Georgia, 30339. I have the pleasure tonight um, to be representing Republic Property Company in connection with the request to annex, rezone, and have, uh, have variances granted and also a development plan approved with respect to the property at 1706 Blairs Bridge Road. So the good news is the first one, two, three, four items on your agenda all relate to the same property. So we'll hopefully be able to knock those out pretty quickly and, and be able to see the Braves play tonight. Um, just um, as a little bit of background, this property is currently in unincorporated Douglas County. Um, and the intent tonight is um, we have an application to have this property annexed and rezoned from RA in the county to LI in the city. Um, and just to give you a little bit of background of the property, it's about approximately an eight acre parcel. Um, it's located um, adjacent to I-20 um, and along Brillers Bridge Road. Um, it is bordered to the east um, by an apartment complex. Um, and then to the south, it is bordered by a lot of industrial uses. Um, in fact, one of the properties directly across the street is a property that was annexed 
in 2019 um, by Cabot and developed as a very similar industrial building, um, a bit larger than one we're proposing here, um, but very complementary. Um, the facades, the structure and design of the proposed building at 1706 Blairs Bridge Road um, will be very, very similar to the one that's been constructed across the street. Um, the proposed size of this building would be about 76,000 um, square feet, um, likely to be a single or maybe two tenant um, occupi occupier of the building. Um, and just a little bit more kind of about the variance requests and, and this, the property itself and the conditions. Um, on the western side of the property, there's a drainage detention area for um, DOT. Um, and there's also a railroad easement across the property, which is why, as you'll see when you see the, the, the development plan, most of the development is concentrated toward the west, um, which has precipitated the need to have some variances with respect to the apartment uh, complex neighbor. Now, there is plenty of buffer in between the two properties, and none of the intense uses, trucking, or a lot of the driving around will be on that side of the property. So there'll be parking areas that kind of come up to that border, but there won't be a lot of intense uses there. Um, so that was planned so that we'd be able to do that. Um, but the intent is to, to bring the property into the city, to develop it uh, consistently with the other industrial uses that are along Blair's Bridge Road. Also, to give some continuity to the Blair's Bridge Road corridor, having more of the properties um, within the city's jurisdiction as opposed to kind of one in the city, one in the county, and one in the city. Um, and with me today, I have uh, Jerry Dawes, a representative of Republic Property Company, um, who can present some more information with respect to the project. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Ma Madam Mayor. Good evening. Um, Mr. Dawes, name and address for the record. For those that may be viewing us, please. Thank you. Name is Jerry Dawes, Republic Property Company, 3453 Pierce Avenue, Atlanta, Georgia. Thank you, sir. Um, the two parcels that we're going to address in total today are across from each other, outlined in red on the aerial, as you see. As Melissa mentioned, we developed along with Cabot the parcel across the street that you were kind enough to both annex and rezone for us in 2019. That project's now complete. We can say we have at least, and we are very thankful for that, and we hope this will be a follow-on of great success. Also, if I can get you to, the site plan, as Melissa mentioned, slightly over eight acres, um, across from our prior building, and it is uh, adjacent to the DOT parcel on uh, I-20. Uh, there is a permanent easement that benefits um, a gas line transmission, uh, which limits the most of the property to the uh, that's actually the east, I think, whatever direction that is. There is, there is a currently a large pond that is providing retainage, retention for the area as it's currently developed. We will add a second pond because that existing pond is now state waters and they won't let us modify that. Uh, also, we intend to develop the building to be identical but smaller than the one across the street for continuity. That's a picture of the completed building cross street that we brought in 2019. We will build the exact version, but a smaller scale of that. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much, sir. I appreciate that. You. Um, just want to make one comment just because I, <clears throat> I visited the site yesterday. And so I was not aware, I guess I had forgotten with all that we have going on that you all were the developer on the property on the south side, then of Blair Bridge across the street this past year. That is correct. Okay. so. And this, this is, as you've just mentioned, an identical plan, but on a smaller scale. That's correct. Yes, okay. sir. Good looking building, really. Uh, I, like, I like what you did on the south side there. It's great Thank job. you. And again, we'll repeat that same scale on smaller portions. Okay. I, I did hear the attorney representative that made a comment about a railroad easement. Did you mean a gas line? At the gas line. I okay, just wanted to make sure I'm looking for something to do with the no, railroad, I know, I know, I and I, I didn't that. see it there. Okay, questions, comments that uh, mayor or, or council may have, I'll be after it. Yes, coach, go ahead. Yeah, I just, uh, the, the pond, uh, was that originally designed as, as runoff at some point, and it just became state waters, or is that just a natural pond that's been there all along? I can't address whether it was natural, but it was improved to handle the runoff. And after a period of time, everything becomes state waters or federal waters. So we, we aren't able to modify it to make it larger. So we just added a second pond. Right. And everything um, to the north of the easement will be left natural uh, after we complete the pond and re-landscaped it. All right, thank you. I just was curious about the pond. So. 
other questions of council madam mayor yes thank go you ahead. so much mr chairman welcome and it's good to see you all again the, the building is attractive i went by um yesterday um there's a, a report in here from kimley horn i was trying to see they had done the county's uh, report if they included um, your site and if there was any opposition or concern from the county as far as the annexation have we gotten anything miss williams and Kimberly Horn, it was it was inclusive as the report is in here, but I can't really extrapolate if your site is in that in this plan. It, both the prior project and this project were incorporated into that study. Mm -hmm. What they did is they took the 2019 study, brought it forward, and took mm -hmm. new traffic counts. Okay. Oh, so there was this traffic count as, as well. It's a lot in this report. Okay. It's a lengthy <laughs> report. Yeah. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you, Mr. Chair. <coughs> Uh, question I guess is more for staff than the applicant is we have we received any comments or uh, issues brought up by any of the residents in either of the two you know, I guess as a housing and an apartment complex adjacent to the site have there been any comments at all we received no opposition on this project and no comments okay all right um, a question about the what, what is the material on the house is that ethos or uh, it's concrete till wall painted till wall oh, that's okay all of its concrete Tilt up? Right. Yeah, correct. Okay. Thank you. That's all, Mr. Chair. Yes, uh, Councilman Estes. Sure. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Um, good evening. Thanks for coming. Um, I am assuming that any trucks or any other traffic coming out of this proposed development would more than likely travel Blair's Bridge back to Thornton. That's correct. If you look at the study, it'll tell you that the preponderance of traffic all goes back to Thornton Road to I-20. It's a, although it's a shorter route back the other direction, it's yeah. not designed to really accommodate the um, semi-trucks. And if I'm not mistaken, without having to go back through all of the paperwork, wasn't that section of Blair's Bridge on the uh, comprehensive transportation plan to, for widening from two to four lanes? Okay. Um, um, I, that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Any others? Yes, Mr. Davis. Councilor Adams, uh, do you remember when the old houses used to be back in that, by that pond? Mm. There's a pond that them old houses, they fell in. You don't remember? I did, I did see yesterday one of those mm -hmm. at the site when I went there, but I, I'm, no, that, that predates that, that me. That used to be bit. the cut through. <laughs> I was still at home with my mom. I wasn't out. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> Yeah, that was, thank you, sir. That was the cut through, Mark, to get to the other side. Thank you. I don't have no question. <laughs> is there anyone else here in the audience that would come and speak in favor of this, remembering now this is a public hearing? We need to give everyone opportunity. Any others that might speak in favor of this application? Seeing none, is there anyone here that would speak in opposition to the application? Seeing none, then we will close the public hearing, and if you all will return on Monday, we will take action on this item. Okay? Thank you. Next item, item B, is an extension of this. Consider a petition to then annex 8.164 acres at 1706 Blairs Bridge Road, Landlot 672, ah. District 18, Section 2, Parcel 3. Application by Carlton Wayne Forrester. And Ms. Patrice Williams is going to handle that for us. Okay. Patrice Williams, Community Development Director, 6701 Church Street. And as Mr. Dahl stated earlier, uh, this will just bring this property into the city along with the other property that he has currently across the street. And so this is just the annexation piece. And you do not have or have not had any opposition or have had no negative information from the county as to their position on it. Correct. And you should have a letter from the county as part of your attachments, but we've not ha heard anything okay. negative from the county. Questions, comments? Seeing none, then we'll take this up on Monday night as far as a part of this, uh, this piece of property. Item C, again, hold a public hearing and consider a request for variances, one, to reduce the required 100-foot minimum side setback between an industrial property adjacent to a residential district in Section 5.04B of the Unified Development Ordinance by 12 feet for a remaining requirement of 88 feet, and two, reduce the required 50 feet undisturbed natural buffer in section 8.02B of the Unified Development Ordinance 
by 10 feet for a remaining requirement of 40 feet on the east side of the lot of 8.164 acres at 1706 Blairs Bridge Road, Landlot 672, District 18, Section 2, Parcel 3. Application by Republic Property Company, LLC. Ms. Williams. Patrice Williams, Community Development Director, 6701 Church Street. Um, I will not repeat those variances as Mr. Uh, Councilman Adams just read them out loud, uh, but staff has reviewed the variances and we don't have any problems with what they're requesting. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Williams. Uh, questions? Uh, anyone? Council? Yes, uh, Mr. Coach. Mr. Chairman, I guess I was just wondering the reasoning for the, the uh, variance request. Um, Coach, if you if you can find it, and I know that this is a very large package. And I look I'm, I look through I'm it. I'm not there yet, but if you will go to the if you will go to the development plan, uh, you will see. Page three. Pardon. Page, Page three. three shows Page a three. diagram. Mm. You will see then the reason for the need for the variance. It's the very corner of the building and, and the parking lot. Yes, if you view page three. Uh, it's, also, it's also shown on the. Yes. Board. You can see there the red would be um, parking lot and building that would encroach. And then the green, and I cannot read it on this small print, but the green is actually the building. Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. I'd, mine's spinning right now, so I can't even find it now, but that's, that's fine. That answers my question. Okay. Other questions? Comments? Yes, Madam Mayor. Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman. I would just uh, bring to the attention of the council um, that the Planning Commission approve these items. Planning Commission did recommend approval, yes, ma'am. If I'm not mistaken, unanimously, but it's in the report. Yes, sir, unanimously. Any other question or comment? Seeing none, then we will, um, it, well, is there any, it being a public hearing, I must give opportunity. Anyone here that would want to speak in favor of this item or these variances or in opposition? Okay, seeing none, then we will close the public hearing and we'll take up item C for a vote on Monday. Thank you, folks. Oh, we have one other, I'm sorry. You're, you're not quite finished. Item D, consider a request for approval of a development plan for 8.164 acres at 1706 Blairs Bridge Road, land lot 672, District 18, Section 2, Parcel 3, for plans dated September 6, 2020, application by Republic Property Company Incorporated, Ms. Williams. Patrice Williams, Community Development Director, 6701 Church Street. The applicant, Republic Property Company Incorporated, is seeking development of a non-residential project per City of Douglasville UDO Section 10.07 for property located at 1706 Blairs Bridge Road in Land Lot 672, District 18, Section 2, Parcel 3. The, propose, the proposal currently depicts a distribution center warehouse and allowable use in the light industrial zoning district. The proposed building is 77,000 square, square feet and proposed building site area is eight acres. The site plan indicates 114 proposed auto parking spaces, nine trailer truck parking spaces. The development will have two access points on Blair's Bridge Road. The exterior elevations indicate site cast tilt wall concrete panels and glass door fronts and metal, and metal canopies. Uh, attached is the application, the site plans and elevations. This item is in conjunction with the annexation and the rezoning and the variance. Staff has reviewed the application and the attachments and has determined that the proposed plans meet the development requirements of the UDO. Thank you, Ms. Williams. So she has, as Ms. Williams has stated, uh, everything within the development plan is within uh, our requirements. And so they are requesting that we move forward with all of the items they sound as though they may want to fast track this if approved. It sounds like it. We don't do that very often, but uh, looks as though they were prepared. Any question or comment? Public comment? Seeing none, then we will move on to the next item. We'll take this up on Monday. Thank you all. Appreciate you coming in. We're not done yet. <laughs> <laughs> Hang around then. <laughs> All right. We're at item E, is that correct? Someone help me keep score here. <coughs> I'm sorry. We're at D, correct? We're at E. 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 Item E as in e. Edward. Hold a public hearing and consider a request for a change in zoning from RA 
residential agricultural county to R2 single family residential detached district city for 1.041 acres at 1713 Blairs Bridge Road, land lot 672, District 18, Section 2, Parcel 4. Application by Republic Property Company Incorporated. Ms. Williams. Hey, Patrice Williams, Community Development Director, 6701 Church Street. The applicant's narrative states that the purpose of this request is to annex the subject property to help facilitate the development of a warehouse distribution center. The subject property is currently developed with a single family residence that is being rented. The applicant is annexing this property to prevent an unincorporated island along Blair's Bridge Corridor, which is illegal, well, not allowable under the Georgia law. The applicant seeks R2 residential zoning for the property, which is consistent with the 2024 land use plan and the City of Douglas Hill comprehensive plan. The preliminary site plan provided by the applicant shows a relatively small warehouse facility at 1706 Blair's Bridge Road. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Williams. It being a public hearing, it, does the applicant have something to present on this item? Yes, good evening, Madam Mayor and members of the City Council. Melissa Perrin, Yacht, 100 Galleria Parkway, Suite 1800, Atlanta, Georgia. Again, I have the pleasure of representing Republic Property Company in connection with this request to annex and rezone the property across the street from 1706 Blairs Bridge Road. Um, as Ms. Williams stated, um, the reason we are seeking annexation and rezoning of this parcel is to allow 1706 Blairs Bridge Road to be annexed into the city, because um, without it, it, there would be the possible creation of an unincorporated island, um, which would not be permitted. So um, we do want to say we are looking for the property to be rezoned um, from RA in the county to R2 in the city. Um, there is a current um, house on the property that is being rented. Um, the original thought was to leave to demolish the house um, and leave the property as open space. Um, but after further consideration, um, we see we feel that it would be best to leave the house on the property, allow it to continue to be rented. Um, the R2 zoning would not permit any more intensive use than is currently existing at the property. Um, so in the event that anyone would ever seek to develop that property in the future, it would come before the city. Um, and so there wouldn't be any no change in the use of the property in conjunction with the rezoning and annexation into the city. Um, and to the extent anything different to, would um, be the property be used for any different use, it would have to come before the city for rezoning. So um, just to note, the planning commission did appro uh, recommend approval of the annexation and rezoning. They did put the condition that it become and remain open space. Um, so we are seeking a slightly s different request than what was approved by the planning commission um, with respect to allowing the house to remain um, and for the R2 zoning um, to be implemented on that property. Question. Uh, is there any requirement that this open space be tied to the parcel across the street as far as any um, impervious surface or uh, it's, it's two separate parcels so two separate parcels and the, the entire reason for seeking the annexation and the rezoning is to prevent the, the unincorporated island okay <coughs> other questions yes uh, mr. mayor pro tem yeah, chair this is again for the staff I, on the sub the property future land use map on page five, there's an uh, arrow pointing uh, with a label that says city property. Am, am I understanding that just simply means city territory? We do, the city doesn't have actual property that we own adjacent to the site. Is that correct? Okay, I just want to be want to clarify that. Thank you. Others comments, Madam Mayor. Any other council? Okay. Is there anyone? One, one quick. Yes. Go ahead. Clarification, Jeff. please. Um, it's my understanding that that this. Ownership of this parcel is not going to change. Is that correct? Jerry Dawes, uh, 3543 Pierce Avenue, Atlanta, Georgia. Currently, we have it under contract to purchase it uh, in order to accommodate the non island um, zoning issue or ownership issue. Um, it is currently leased. The lease on it runs for several more months unbeknownst to us and there is an option for the current owner to retain ownership although at the current time he has not exercised that option to retain the ownership which is why he would like to have the uh, green space open space requirement not burden the property since it's currently zoned for a single family residential unit okay thank you yes sir any others Okay, is there anyone else here that would speak in support of this, this item in our public hearing? Anyone here that would speak in opposition to the item? Any other questions? Seeing none, then we will close the public hearing. 
and we will take this item up on Monday. Next item, consider a petition to annex 1.041 acres at 1713 Flares Bridge Road, Land Lot 672, District 18, Section 2, Parcel 4, application by Greg Kinzel. Ms. Williams. Patrice Williams, Community Development Director, 6701 Church Street. This item goes with the previous item. This is, this is the annexation for that small parcel with the house. Again, uh, thank you, Ms. Williams. Is there any, was there any information uh, that we would need to know about from the county concerning this piece as far as annexation? No, sir, they're good with it. Okay, questions, comments of council? Public comment? Seeing none, we'll take that up on Monday. Yes, thank you all. <laughs> Item G, hold a public hearing and consider a request for change in zoning from GC General Commercial District City and RLD Low Density Single Family Residential District County to PRD Planned Residential Development District for 18.235 acres at 5011, 5029, 5049, and 5059 Reservoir Drive and Arbor Place Boulevard in Land Lot 24, District 1, Section 5. Parcels 10, 11, 74, and 76. And Land Lot 23, District 1, Section 5, Parcels 124 and 125. Application by Inline Communities, LLC. Ms. Williams. Patrice Williams, Community Development Director, 6701 Church Street. The applicant is proposing a townhome development that consists of 91 front-loaded townhomes measuring 20 feet by 45 feet and 94 rear-loaded townhomes measuring 20 feet by 45 feet. The site plan illustrates a clubhouse, a community green, and associated stormwater detention pond. Based on the site plan that was submitted with the application, there will be approximately 185 townhomes at approximately 10.14 units per acre. Uh, the number of units were lowered following the October 6th Planning Commission meeting, so we went from 193 to 185 townhomes. The updated site plan shows 185 units on 18.235 acres, introducing incre increased density that may complement surrounding commercial development and act as a buffer between the commercial property and R2 zoning adjacent to the property. The proposed townhome development will be an expansion of the Regional Activity Center character area which includes land directly north of the development. The proposed use is consistent with the comprehensive plan with the, pro with the proposed future land use designation of Regional Activity Center. Guidelines for this designation include residential development with open space and recreation on properties of over 10 acres. The purpose of the Regional Activity Center is to provide an area that can support a high intensity of development that can serve a regional market. Typical land uses include varying densities of residential development. The property would satisfy the high intensity suggestion set forth by the Regional Activity Center. Thank you, Ms. Williams. Is the applicant here? The applicants are with us tonight. Good evening, everyone. Joe Fowler, Post Office Box 49. I'm here on behalf of the applicant and allow me to introduce Mr. Brian Musoff. Seated next to him is Ms. Beth Kidd. The engineer who worked on this project is Mr. Ken Wood. And let me note that we have some handouts, if it's permissible to hand them out, I know your normal policy is not to permit it, but because of the reduction in the density as just described, we have the very latest hot off the press version, and it also shows in it the size of the fence that was a discussion that we had within the last week or so. So can we get some direction from you? Quickly. All right, can you just hand those out? While she's doing so, I think without distracting you, let me just note that as you recall, a form of this application was previously considered by this body on an application that was submitted back in February of this year. And it was, as you know, accompanied by a request to annex the same property into the city limits. A comprehensive traffic study was submitted as required by your PRD zoning regulation. And then also an application for the annexation as you heard described. Sometime since then, there have been two citizens meetings, one by Zoom and the other by a live meeting here in the council chambers. And as explained, as a result of those citizens meetings combined with several meetings of the city council, that application to rezone was withdrawn on September the 1st. And a new application, the one that you have before you now, 
was submitted. The former application had a single entrance to the site from Arbor Place Boulevard down Reservoir Drive. That has now changed, as you can see on the site plan before you. It's two entrances, and as you can see on the site plan, one will remain on Reservoir Drive, but now the second and primary entrance will be, as just noted, off of Arbor Place Boulevard. That property, as you know, is being acquired from CBL. So the request before you is to rezone the acreage as described for the number of townhomes that you heard. The staff has recommended approval, and I will note that Brian and Beth and others may provide other details in a moment about aspects of the project, but two quick things. The site will be fenced around the entire perimeter with a six-foot fence, and there'll be no access to the site through the Heritage Valley subdivision, which was something that had come up at various aspects of the meetings. So either Ms. Kidd or Mr. Musoff have a um, video to show to you, and we'll proceed. Thank you, Mr. Fowler. Good evening, everyone. My name is Beth Kidd with Inline Communities and 836 Euclid Avenue in Atlanta. Um, so we are very excited to be before you all to present our plan changes to you. I know Joe just went over some of the history, but I thought I'd just give a real quick background of kind of how we got to this point. We were originally drawn to this site as a PRD due to its location in this regional activity center. As you know, we've got intense commercial land uses to the north, residential land uses to the south of us, and so we felt like our proposed land use is a great transitional buffer between these two different zonings. Um, we also know that um, it, a stated goal of the Douglasville comp plan is to provide um, or support initiatives that provide and support economic activity around the mall and support a thriving commercial business center around the mall. And we really think our plan and our proposed use um, will go a long way to do that by simply just providing more rooftops in the area to support these commercial businesses. Um, so after we held, we came before you all in August, asked to be tabled to reassess our plan, held another community meeting. And so after we held this community meeting, we really went back to our plan and decided to go back to the drawing board and see what we could do to make some changes to, um, to, to respond to some of what we've heard. And so as Joe said, one of the big things we heard throughout this is just with traffic patterns the way they are in the area, that one access point off of Reservoir Drive was just not going to be sufficient for this plan, and that we really needed to go back and figure out a way to have a second entrance. And so we are very excited to be able to say now that we have negotiated an agreement with um, two parcels to the north of our site, as you'll see on our site plan. And so what this does now is um, gives us two access points. So we now have a primary entrance off of Arbor Place Boulevard, and our secondary entrance will be off of Reservoir Drive. And so not only does this um, provide us two access points, but we're also very excited because this really makes us truly a mixed-use component of this activity center. Our residents will now be able to easily walk to and access on foot um, these surrounding commercial uses. Um, our main access point is going to be off Arbor Place Boulevard, and then our second one will be off of Reservoir Drive. In the last plan that you saw, we also had 100% one-car garages. You'll now see that on this revised land plan, we are now planning for, um, we've got actually gotten rid of all of our one-car garage front entry homes. And so now on the perimeter of our property, we now have all two-car garage front entry homes. And so that's something that we heard from residents that were very important to them. Um, additional changes that we've made, we've negotiated an agreement with the um, neighboring mall property owners to utilize and expand their stormwater detention facility. And so we'll now be tying into their stormwater detention facility, which is on the northwest side of our site. Like Joe said, um, in direct response to some of what we've heard from neighbors, we're agreeing to provide a six foot tall um, property uh, or privacy fence rather along our property line where we abut residential neighborhoods. And so this was in direct response to what we heard from um, a few folks that they were just kind of concerned with some of the foot traffic that's in the area that's stemming from some of the commercial development. And so we're proposing to add that fence, which we passed out a picture of that, um, along our property lines where we abut these commercial or these residential neighborhoods. Um, and then we've also really tried to, have, sorry, I haven't even been switching through this, and I don't think you all can see what I'm switching through up here, but we, we really tried to also hone in on some of our architecture so that y'all can better understand some of the um, details that we are proposing. And so things like brick, stone, board and batten, hardy plank, cedar shake, um, accents, that sort of thing, so that we, we have, will have a high quality um, architectural elevations in our neighborhood. 
And then also one thing to point out, we'll still, ha still have rear loaded homes facing Arbor Place Boulevard and Reservoir Drive. So both of our access points um, or entrances to the neighborhood. And we think that's really important because it will provide a really nice streetscape for people as they're entering our neighborhood, driving past the neighborhood. They're not gonna see any garages. Um, it'll give the neighborhood a really high quality architectural feel um, and just provide a really nice landscape experience. Um, and I guess just in, oh, okay, great. I did not, last time I was thinking that they were not able to at Planning Commission. So I guess just the last thing I would say is um, negotiating that additional land um, was not an insignificant expense. It's owned by the mall property owners and they had a commercial value on that land, but we understood and heard how important it was gonna be to this plan and we really think that by adding it, we've made for a better neighborhood that's gonna be truly walkable, truly integrated into the community, um, and that will just provide um, additional rooftops to the area, which will also be a, a big bonus for, for this activity center. And so we're available to answer questions and we um, look forward to hearing your comments. Thank you very much. First of all, I'll ask if there are questions that council or mayor may have of the applicant. Yes, uh, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem, you raise your hand first, go ahead. to 185. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm sorry, be, the, the difference between what? I'm sorry, Brian Muse off Inline Communities, 144 Whitlock Avenue. Okay, so right now we, we haven't proposed a rental restriction, as I said at the planning commission meeting originally, and as we had a community meeting here before, if the council is interested in putting a, uh, a rental restriction on it, that's not something, you know, it's, it's not ideal for us because it makes the project more difficult to finance, but it's not going to stop us from moving forward. So, you know, we're, we're comfortable with whatever the council is. I think, as I've stated before, usually they're somewhere between 15 and 10% is what I'm familiar with doing other, you know, townhome projects. But... Um, you know, like I said, it, it doesn't help to get these to get our deal financed to, with the banks to do a, an A and D loan with them. They prefer that you don't have those rental restriction on it. So it's not my, it's my preference that we don't have one, but we will move forward regardless. I think that ratio is still about the same. Yeah, it's, it's about 50-50 is what it is. And when we lost, actually when we went down the, 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 from 93 to 85, the ones that we lost were the front entry. So if anything, it upped that ratio for the rear entry, but it's about 50-50. Okay. Um, it, based on looking at the plan, it appears you have sidewalks on all of the blocks except for the one in the middle, roughly where, th that seems to be the biggest change in your pl site plan was you moved the um, community center from the one block uh, that hits on the reservoir drive over to one closer to the Arbor Boulevard, Arbor Place Boulevard, but there's no sidewalk around that block. Is that just a miss on the drawing or? Uh, Kenneth Wood, 350 Research Court, East Street Corners, Georgia. Uh, Council Member Terry, are you talking about right here in the center? Yeah, the one, the one that's, it, it's basically a rectangular block. There's an alleyway that cuts through it to, that goes north-south. Uh -huh. There's no sidewalk shown on that block. I don't know if that's just a miss. Uh, it's just, it's, it's just not drawn in there. So those are, everything in the, in the light color, the white color, there would be a sidewalk along that front edge and turning yeah. and then going in front of those front-loaded units. And Actually, then with the, those are front loaded in that center, so that would be a large green space that is back behind them. But yes, that whole block would have a wrapping around. Okay. And, the then, and then the block above that, too, where the mail kiosk is, I notice there's no, you're not showing That's the right, sidewalk. yeah, it's just a, just a graphical error. Should have been picked up on the red lines. For sure. Um, the, uh, the streets that are going to be put in, are these going to remain private streets? Or will those be deeded over to the city once the construction is complete? So, um, the widths and the way they'll be built is all to the standards, and so we would we would love to see them as as a as public streets. 
uh, but most likely based on just past experiences, I'm sure they would go private streets because we have some of the, uh, you know, the hammerheads and such, but we would love to see them be as, uh, as public streets. How is, is there a procedure, um, city manager, on, on how that happens, whether in these types of developments, whether they automatically become city streets or do we have to negotiate or how does that work? Um, Ms. Littlefield may have the legal process. Do you have that, Ms. Littlefield? I knew what the process was under the prior ordinance, but with the newness of the UDO, uh, give us the, the break, if you will, between meetings to get you an answer on that, please. Thank you. Um, one last little, little question is, it, I think I heard originally that there was gonna be an aluminum fence, but the picture you're showing us is now a wooden fence, six foot, so it will be wooden? Okay. Yeah, the, the idea is it was supposed to be privacy, and uh, as we kind of thought through the aluminum picket, we just thought that this would better fit the, 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 I mean, in the you're intent. Like, you're adjacent to Arbor Station. I would hope that you have as much wood as possible. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, was there any uh, attempt or will there be a request uh, to put a stop sign uh, anywhere along Arbor Boulevard, Arbor Place Boulevard? At the end, it'll, just, it'll remain through traffic on Arbor Place, and the stop sign will be just in the... Um, right now, I don't think we had contemplated it. It's such a, you know, it's a feeder road, uh, a collector road. I, I don't know. I don't know if Public Works would. That I, I would not see that there would be a stop sign at that location. It's an SSN. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I believe that's all I have at the moment. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Madam Mayor, did you have a question or a comment? Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm not certain. I think that might be a zoning or traffic not the development part of their plan. I'm not certain if they can answer that question about the stop sign. But um, I did want to uh, just compliment inline um, communities for uh, working with the neighbors in the community and coming together and making a lot of those concessions with um, the privacy fence, the two car garages, um, the density issue, um, the entrances, which was a really big thing for me, was trying to have an additional entrance. Um, I'm glad to hear about the detention pond. Hopefully the question that I have is that the uh, capacity could hold the Water and Sewer Authority. Mr. Fowler is saying, okay, you can answer if you have the answer to that with those 185 units. So for the, uh, for the stormwater facility, the way that our agreement with CBL is, is that the existing pond is, is it's fairly large, but it does take a portion of that commercial. And so we've been going through as built mm -hmm. and we have an agreement with them to expand it to the West. And so we'll be adding additional volume that will both do the runoff reduction, which is the new ordinance mm -hmm. coming in as well as a uh, detention for it. Okay. And so we'll have that volume. You'll have that. Okay. Very good. Um, and, and we know this is a final plat, so we appreciate the architectural renderings that you've given us in talking about the uh, materials, building materials that you'll use, which seems to really elevate the project to be a, a higher quality. Um, so we appreciate the things that you've done um, already, uh, just coming into the community and trying to work with, um, with neighbors. We understand that people want to protect their investments, and we want to have quality development into the city. Um, our Housing stock is just, you know, it's the thing about rentals, and this is what I'm going to make a mention of, uh, the 10 to 15 percent, I'm not certain if that is a requirement that we really want to hold tight to the 10 percent. I know um, that would be ideal that you want to have owner occupancy, but when we put our house up, it went, and we had to get out really fast. Um, within two weeks, it was gone, and so we rented, and we couldn't find a place to, to buy, so asked the person that we rented from, they said they loved us being rental our family because we you know, paid on time and kept the place nice. So there sometimes could be a market for people if they're selling a home or if they're you know, a student or if parents are, so we kind of you know, want to keep that rental um, portion open as well, just to have for people to have options for living space. Um, and we were glad to be able to find some place to move in our downtown area, but we would have been uh, really and we moved in a townhome, so it would have been really difficult if we didn't have a place to move myself and the three kids before buying after our homes sold, because homes are selling really fast in the county. I understand that they're on the market pretty quickly, and especially in a certain income bracket. And my last question is the uh, price point. 
Do we have a, I thought that a might note? be what you were going to ask after that. Um, <laughs> so our, I would, where our average sales price will be, will be around 250,000. Okay. Um, you know, we'll have a couple different size units. The smaller mm -hmm. ones might be a little bit below that and the bigger ones might be a little above that, but we'll average around 250,000. That's a nice price point for a townhome. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate it. Yes, uh, Coach, did you have a question? It, will this uh, uh, development be uh, HOA driven at once it's in? Because uh, I know that's one of the one of the things I've heard from folks that have come before the council before mm -hmm. that haven't been in favor of large uh, townhome developments is uh, the rental and the potential for the area to not retain its value, but HOA a lot of times helps that. So. Yeah, we'll have an HOA and recorded CCNRs that will govern the neighborhood, and yes, it'll be an HOA controlled okay. community. Good. Thank you, that's all I had, Mr. Chairman. Anyone else? Before I ask for public comment, then I, I wanna make sure that, cl that something's clarified because I know in one of the meetings that we held here in the auditorium, uh, I don't remember who the presenter was, it was made mention that there would be a rental office and I believe that there was a lot of discussion from the community and I also caught that and it was corrected to say it would be a on-site sales office, not a rental office. I'm going to contemplate that the community is going to be very interested in having a limit on the rental percentage. Uh, even if uh, there is, whether it be 10% or 15%, that's something that we can discuss, but I don't think that 185 townhome units uh, that would be rentals would be something that the community would be interested in entertaining. At least that's the that's the information I've been provided with. So I want to make sure there has not been a change uh, of direction here, uh, because we were we were told that that was a sales office, and if that's going to be a rental community, then we need to. Uh, we need to hold for just a minute. Go no, ahead. Ab absolutely not. I mean, we, I'm negotiating three different offers with three, three different home builders because I'm, I'm developing the lots and then, you know, they're going to build the vertical. And so, you know, I mean, that's, okay. that's not our plan or intent or anything else. Like okay. I said, it's just simply, want to reiterate it, that. it makes that it harder for me to get my loan with that retinal restriction on. And the higher it is, the better it is sure. for me strictly from a financing standpoint. Okay. Thank you. Uh, is there anyone? Oh, I'm sorry, Miss. Uh, Ms. Uh, Miller, go ahead. It's fine. Thank you very much. Um, I just wanted to thank you guys for working with us and listening to us as well as the community and making changes to help benefit the entire community. Um, on the note with the rentals, I know that we did speak about that last time, and in speaking with several constituents and citizens, that is a very big concern for them is that cap on the rentals. Um, I would have to highly stress my want, desire for on behalf of the constituents that we do have a cap on the rental, if you could please. And then I just wanted to ask, uh, I believe the last time that we looked at it, the entrance was going to be on the other side, is that correct? Yes, originally it was going to be off Reservoir Drive, okay. and now there'll be secondary access okay. there. And I may have missed it when I was looking through here, but was there a rendering or drawing of some type of the entrances and the style that they're going to be? We don't have a rendering of that as of yet no okay. but it'll be um you know high quality brick stone monument type of entrance with nice landscaping but we don't have that rendering yet yeah we, we have not designed that yet but that did just remind me of something when joe talked about having the fence around the entire property I th hopefully it goes without saying we're not going to have that fence along Arbor Place Boulevard in front of the townhomes that are fronting on the road there. Um, so I just want to make sure when we when we write if if hopefully if we're approved if it gets written up that you know it gets written up correctly and there's no interpretation issues down down the line. That's fine. I completely understand. Um, and I'm sure that you guys are really good at what you do and will consider it, but I just wanted to point out with having one of the entrances being a little bit smaller than the other, I know that we've had an issue recently um, with our, our ladder truck got stuck in um, a subdivision with the, the gate. Uh, it's actually not a gated community, but with the entranceway. Um, so just making sure that all of our vehicles can fit through those. Which one is a... Uh which right now we have all the roads at the at the most current fire code. Which one is where you where you seeing as being smaller? 
Um, I was under the impression, and I could be wrong, that the entrance exit on Reservoir Drive was now going to be a smaller, like, secondary entrance Oh, exit. no. We're, no. Ju we're just saying that um, we've made the primary entrance. Uh, when you, If you drive in either road, you, you know, you'll see the rear loaded units, so the little park area on the front. But both roads will be standard size. There won't. We are. We're only saying as smaller as this. Is it? It's a secondary. As it's the alternate entrance. It's not the primary entrance. But road widths. They're going to be okay. to the fire code. Gotcha. For Thank sure. you. That's all I've got. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions of council? Yes, Madam Mayor. Another question. Uh, not a question. Just a comment. S Mayor Pro Tem was making certain. And just for the record, I'm not saying I want the total development to be rental. I was just saying a portion for people who may be in transition or want to rent a high quality development. So that 10 to 15 percent, whatever we decide, the stipulation is uh, good. So he was making certain. I'm like, no, I didn't say I want the whole thing to be rented. So just making that clarity. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank Mr. you. Chairman. Okay. If there are no other questions or comments of council or Madam Mayor, then I will ask then if there's anyone here to represent the uh, application any further as far as support for the application. And if not, is there anyone here that would speak tonight in opposition to this application? Please come forward. Give us your name and address for the record, and uh, we'd love to hear your comments. Good evening. I'm Cindy Welch at 3002 Concord Way, Douglasville, Georgia. Um, and I do want to thank the developer for the fence that he's going to put up because they were proposing five foot and we had a little meeting with our neighborhood and we were hoping they'd do six foot. So I'll be glad to take this back and show them that it really is gonna be a nice fence. Um, I do have a couple comments. One of the things is the zoning signs. The only sign that I could find was at the end of Reservoir Drive and you could barely see it because there was all these weeds and stuff growing up and there's nothing on um, Arbor Place Boulevard, none at all. And since that property is coming out on there, I would think that there'd be a zoning sign. But that was just. Thank you for reminding me of that, Ms. Welch. I did not remember to mention that and I appreciate you bringing it up. Um, is there any um, reason why we would not have had signs on Arbor Place? Or question. Based on section 12.05 CD, in the UDL, we did place the signs in the appropriate places, and we do have photos. So we, based on the code, we have the signs where they should be. So I guess my question then, Ms. Williams, would were there signs at any time on Arbor, Arbor Place Boulevard? We had them on Reservoir. They were on Reservoir where they were initially. Okay. Because um, the Ar Reservoir, I mean, Arbor Place is proposed, correct? It isn't something that is a done deal Correct. And reservoir, okay. But it's it still fronts on a public road, and I know from being in zoning for 28 years, mm -hmm. we had to place signs on all public roads where the property up for zoning um, was coming up, and we had to post those signs. But I will be mm -hmm. glad to take a picture of the sign at Reservoir Drive because you cannot see it unless you go clear down and I mean it's, it's not weeds. very clear at all. But point that's point just taken, Ms. Welch, yes. Thank you so much. And the other thing I would like is Mark brought up is about um, the rental properties. And I would think if you're doing 180 some homes and you do 10%, that's 18 homes for rental. And I would think that would be sufficient because we don't want rental properties that people do not maintain and they've got cars parked everywhere. And I mean, I've been in some of them here and we just don't want that in that neighborhood. It's going to look nice. They're putting in very nice homes, and we'd like it to stay that way. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Welch. Anyone else? Anyone else that would speak in opposition to this application? Please come forward. Okay, I'll close the public hearing, and I'll ask one other time if there's any other comment or question that anyone has concerning the applicant. We will plan to take this up on Monday, and we appreciate you all coming in. And I also would like to reiterate that I appreciate you working with the community and uh, trying to accommodate as best that you can in all areas of the development. We look forward to taking it up on Monday. Thank you.
I want to wait. You all have eight. I'm not dismissing them unless they want to leave, but I mean, <laughs> we still have other items. <laughs> <laughs> I tried, Miss Welch. Item H Consider a petition to annex 15.593 acres at 5011, 5029, 5049, and 5059 Reservoir Drive, Landlock 24. District 1, Section 5, Parcels 10, 11, 74, and 76. Application by Joanne A. Wood and Clayton Preston of Reservoir Holdings, LLC. Ms. Williams. Patrice Williams, Community Development Director, 6701 Church Street. This is bringing in those county parcels into the city. As you can see, it's 15.593. It's less than the 18.235 because there's some parcels already in the city. So there's a slight difference between those two numbers but this would be bringing those county parcels into the city. Thank you, ma'am. Questions, comments? I believe Ms. Williams has given us a very sufficient explanation of the reason that we have a different amount of property there. If not, we'll take that up on Monday night when considering the application. Item I, consider a request for final plat approval for inline communities for the purpose of lot consolidation of six tracks for 18.2 acres at 5011, 5029, 5049, and 5059 Reservoir Drive, and on Arbor Place Boulevard, Landlot 24, District 1, Section 5, Parcels 10, 11, 74, and 76, and Landlot 23, District 1, Section 5, Parcels 124 and 125. Application by Inline Communities, LLC. Ms. Williams. Patrice Williams, Community Development Director, 6701 Church Street. Um, we are advised by legal to go ahead and do the final plat. That, well, yeah, to do the final plat, it helps with the setbacks. And so we have this item before you tonight, uh, wanting your support. Okay. Um, questions, comments? You have a final plat that is on page number four, I believe it is. Combining all of these tracks. Any question or comment? Yes, Coach. Uh, the H and I are all together. Yes, that is correct. That's all the same piece of property. Yes, sir. Questions? Any comment? Any public comment? Seeing none, we'll take that up on Monday night. Are we now finished with that parcel? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Moving on to item J. Hold a public hearing. And consider a request for change in zoning from RA Residential Agricultural District in the county to OI Office Institutional in the city for 6.762 acres at 3441 King Drive, 2032 Riverside Parkway, 2052 Riverside Parkway, and 2070 Riverside Parkway. In land lot 156, District 1, Section 5, parcels 48, 49, 50, and 51. Application by Serenity at New Manchester, LLC. Ms. Williams. Patrice Williams, Community Development Director, 6701 Church Street. The applicant, Serenity at New Manchester, LLC, is requesting to annex and rezone approximately 6.762 acres from RA Residential Agriculture in the county to OI Office Institutional in the city. The subject property is located at the intersection of Riverside Parkway and King Drive in Douglas County. If the annexation request is successful, the subject property would be annexed into a mixed-use design character area. The mixed-use design character area lists list the OI zone as one of its recommended land uses. With a successful annexation, the proposed project would be consistent with the city's future land use map. The applicant is proposing to develop 25 senior rental cottages, 50 me memory care units, and 95 assistant living units. And we do have the applicant with us tonight. Thank you, Ms. Williams. Would the applicant please come forward and identify yourself, name and address for the record? Joe yeah. Fowler, Post Office Box 489, Douglasville. I'm here on behalf of the applicant and allow me to introduce Freddie Allen, who is the representative of Serenity at New Manchester. As you heard described, the request is to annex and rezone 6.762 acres. It's at the southwest intersection, Riverside Parkway, King Drive. It's directly across, as I'm sure you've seen at this point, the primary entrance, the tributary. It changes it from re residential, agricultural in the county to O&I in the city for that acreage. The plan is to construct 
25 to 30 independent living cottages for seniors 55 years and older, plus a building of approximately 128,000 square feet, two or three stories to house 90 assisted living units and 30 memory care units. You have a site plan before you, I believe, but we also have a brief video of the project that I believe we are ready to show in just a moment. Here it is. It's about a minute. This was re reviewed by the Planning Commission. Staff recommended approval. So did the Planning Commission. And Mr. Allen will give you an overview of the project and answer any questions you may have. Freddie? Thank you, Mr. Allen. Good evening. Freddie Allen, 9954 Barnesbury Road, Douglasville, Georgia. The proposed project is, as uh, Mr. Fowler said, directly across from Tributary Subdivision. I've been in, uh, uh, a resident of Tributary for the past 10 years. My vision is simple to make a um, facility and housing for senior citizens where they can obtain care for their latter years and an environment that is conducive with um, parks where they can walk and have assistant care um, to provide for them, just like Tributary, to kind of continue the culture of Douglasville and uh, one of what I think is one of the finest communities that we have. So Thank you, sir. Any, Appreciate that. Any questions? Yes, uh, Coach, do you have questions? Is this uh, uh, development, uh, senior development, is it the only one of its kind at this end of the county? At the okay, sounds. It's I don't. I don't know of another. Uh, it look. I mean, it looks like a a, a great project and uh, just looking at it and um, probably much needed down uh, the southern end of the city. Thank you. Yes, uh, Councilman Essex. Um, thank you, Mr. Allen. Um, yes, there is absolutely a need. There is nothing nearby that serves the same purpose. Um, Mr. Allen and his group have been very responsive and, and excellent at involving the surrounding community. Um, and as I expect you will see at a later date, um, even the design is such to coordinate with the existing development. Um, and whether it's appropriate or, <laughs> or not, um, it's really nice to, to be able to, to say something that's all too rare that, that um, at least from my experience, um, the response that I have gotten from the nearby residents has been incredibly supportive of this project and the, d the entire development, um, unlike anything I have seen in my 15 years here. Um, so thank you for what you are attempting to do. Others? Madam Mayor? Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Allen, it's um, nice to meet you and um, excited that you're bringing this type of development to, um, to the city of Douglasville. I'm trying not to get emotional. Um, but since you've been there for 10 years, you understand the climate and your neighbors and the whole atmosphere. My mother um, had dementia 
and so one of the things, and she passed away a couple of years ago, and Alzheimer's um, uh, Recognition Month is next month, is teal, the color teal. And so um, one of the <coughs> things that would have been very helpful is for her to stay in her own community. We had to take her to a facility that was about 45 minutes away. And so, um, because we wanted a nice facility for her to be in, and so um, it's nice too that you have uh, seniors that can age in place and be someplace maybe that they lived in tributary or the area and they can go and live in another facility that won't be so foreign to them because that was one of her concerns. She didn't remember a lot, but she knew her space Absolutely. and she knew the, you know, the surrounding area. So she kept saying, I wanna go home. She wanted right. to go back to a right. familiar area. So um, thank you for um, proposing this uh, development. And also I wanted to bring to the council's attention that former Mayor Pro Tem Richard Siegel, Councilman Siegel, um, has written a letter of support. And you know I call him the checker who checks the checker. So if he is recommending this, I think it might be <laughs> something that's, that's good or favorable. Thank you so much, Mr. Allen. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, thank you, sir. It, it's, I appreciate the effort you put into the proposal and, and I will agree with my colleagues in that I think it's a solid idea and it's a good location. Um, of course, I can't help but to be a wet blanket every now and then about a few things. Um, That's okay. You mentioned about wanting to be, you know, holding it up to the standards of tributary and I think just, I haven't seen any renderings in the proposal yet other than what you showed briefly on the video. So I think you've got a ways to go before you get to the tributary level, but um, mm -hmm. what the first thing that jumps out at me at the site plan was I'm, I'm wondering why you're not putting the entrance directly across from the entrance to tributary and just make it into an actual intersection or an inner, you know. So having an offset entrance I think could make for awkward traffic situation, but I think it would also make, it would improve the um, ac access to your site if you actually align it with the tributary entrance. Um, and to kind of get rid of the little curvy road, I don't know that really does anything for you. Um, I would also be very curious to see what the three-story building looks like. Do you have any renderings of that yet? No, we do not. The, uh, the, um, the assisted living facility, that's one large building, correct? Correct. Okay, do you, do you, you don't have any renderings of that? No, at this not time? yet. Okay. So I'll, I'll be very curious to see what that looks, Absolutely. looks like. But I'm happy to, to see how this develops. Um, really look long, you, you say you live in tributaries, so look I long do. and hard, at yeah. learn the lessons that tributary sh gives you in terms of the way the streets are laid out the way the character of the buildings are and, and the scale and the quality, the, the way the sidewalks um, are integrated into the community, all of that goes into making it that development very successful. And so if you can, you can implement that on your site, I think you will have a very, very successful uh, project on your hands. So please keep that in mind, okay? Uh, I appreciate your comments. So we have definitely considered um, an entrance that was more grander that was going to uh, would be complementary to the entrance of tributary, but we also look at the privacy of the residents, duty of care, and level of care that we're able to provide to make sure that they're safe, and especially in this uh, envi environment with COVID. So we're definitely considering um, kind of redesigning that to make it um, more user-friendly. I can solve everything if you right. Riverside. <laughs> so I appreciate that. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes, any others? Uh, do we have anyone here that would speak in, in support of the application in addition to the applicant? Please come forward. Hi, good evening. Uh, Amy McCoy, uh, owner um, of 3180 Ashton Old Road um, in the tributary. Uh, when I met Mr. Allen a few years back, and in helping him with site selection and things of that sort, after hearing his vision, we felt it was very important to make sure it was incorporating that aesthetics of the tributary, looking at the needs of what is needed for the county. Um, and Mayor, you know on multiple times we've talked about senior housing. Um, when I lost my father-in-law after trying to find assisted living facilities, it was very hard. And like you, you didn't want to send them so far away but the need is so dire here. Um, and unfortunately, he wound up passing away in the house without the assisted care that we have been waiting for. Um, so I ask you and I urge you 
to please make sure you approve this because it's not just for my own personal needs with my family, but it would be nice that in their elder age that they would be able to be close to home and I wouldn't have to go counties out the way. And it would just be nice for other people to have that same type of amenity. So again, I encourage you to please push forward through this. Thank you. Thank you. Others? Is there anyone here that would speak then in opposition to the application? Councilman Estes has made the comment, I believe, that there was no, I mean, there was total support for this application. And, it, and it's, so. it's overwhelming and, it, and it's very strong support. Seeing none, then I will close the public hearing. And if there are no other questions that council or Madam Mayor may have, we will take this up on Monday as far as the uh, public hearing for rezoning. Item K, consider a petition to annex 6.762 acres at 3441 King Drive, 2032 Riverside Parkway, 2052 Riverside Parkway, and 2070 Riverside Parkway in land lots 156 District 1, par Section 5, parcels 48, 49, 50, and 51. Application again by Serenity at New Manchester, LLC. Ms. Williams. Patrice Williams, Community Development Director, 6701 Church Street. As the item is written, the applicant is looking to annex these parcels into the city, and so it's just that simple. Thank you. Questions, comments? Uh, this would be a, a part of that rezoning, but it must be done separately as a petition to annex. Any questions? Did the applicant have any comment concerning that item? Okay, we'll move Mr. on to the next. Mr. Chairman, I just oh, was going to ask the question we've, we've already asked at least once tonight is uh, the county, uh, has there been any feedback on any of these annexation requests? I know the first one we did tonight, but there, we've had two others. And I uh, just was wondering if the county has weighed in or commented or anything. We do hear from the county. Um, Ms. Littlefield, our legal counsel, she initiates the process, but we, when we don't hear from them or if they send us a letter saying they're good with it, then that's pretty much all we expect. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So. Thank you. Any others? Okay. Then we will move along then to item L. Thank you all. Hold a public hearing and consider a request for change in zoning from CHC Commercial Heavy Conditions County to LI Light Industrial City for 15.875 acres at 2084 Skyview Drive in land lot 521, District 18, Section 2, Parcel 3. Application by Oakmont Acquisitions, LLC. Ms. Williams. Okay, Patrice Williams, Community Development Director, 6701 Church Street. The applicant's narrative states that the purpose of this request is to annex the subject property to help facilitate the development of a warehouse. The subject property is currently heavy commercial with conditions and developed with a dilapidated single family structure that is currently vacant. The applicant seeks LI zoning for the property. The preliminary site plan shows a relatively small warehouse facility to be developed at 2084 Skyview Drive. Approximately two thirds of the subject property is located within a floodplain and a creek transverse the property. The annexation and rezoning of the property are consistent with the existing environment. Currently, the immediate area and nearby vicinity have light industrial uses to the west of the subject property and heavy commercial uses to the east. The subject property is located in the area on Skyview Drive that is recognized as a location suitable for industrial development. It is adjacent to the former Nioxin building, which is 380,000 square feet. The current comprehensive plan shows this parcel as part of the Regional Activity Center character area. LI is not one of the recommended zoning districts of the Regional Activity Center character area, but due to the varying conditions of the area to light industrial and heavy commercial land uses, the proposed use is deemed suitable. The rezoning of the property would meet the character area goal of providing for an area that can support a high intensity development which serves a regional market. The rezoning to LI is compatible with the purpose and the intent of the most recent comprehensive plan. Thank you, Ms. Williams. Applicant, if you'd please come forward and again, Mr. Fowler. Good evening again, everyone. Joe Fowler, Post Office Box, Douglasville. Allow me to introduce Mr. Hunter Hines, Mr. Thomas Cobb, these are representatives of Oakmont Packlet Acquisitions, the applicant, and behind them, Dan Wintermeyer. He's the designer of all that you have before you. The project actually involves two properties, as you heard, both located on Skyview, totaling 26.1565 acres, and they will be built on the, on the property 
warehouse facility of roughly 181,000 square feet. One of the parcels located on Skyview contains 16.156 acres based on a survey that was completed August the 27th. That is located outside the city limits. It has to be annexed and that's pending. No objection so far from the county. All of this development is adjacent to West Fork and the request before you is to rezone that tract based upon its annexation into the city to light industrial, currently zoned heavy commercial in the county. The second parcel lies immediately to the west containing just over 10 acres, currently zoned light industrial in the city. Now, on the 16 acre tract that lies to the east, it's mostly floodplain and the portion of that property that is usable will be used primarily for truck parking that will lie adjacent to the building which will be on the 10 acre parcel. The bulk of the building will be entirely on that track which is right next to that old Nioxin building, 380,000 square feet. That property is on 33.97 acres. It's currently owned by Industrial Property Fund Number 7 LLC. To the south of this property is the floodplain of Sweetwater Creek. The staff, of course, recommended approval as did the Planning and Zoning Board. To the north of the property is all of the West Fork development that makes, it way, makes its way back out to Thornton Road at the intersection there by the Wendy's. So it's a perfect location. This is consistent with the uses in the immediate area. Any questions, I'll be more than glad to take them or pass them along either to Hunter or Thomas or to Dan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Powell. Questions, comments, counsel? Madam Mayor? Okay, yes, Madam Mayor. Quick question. Um, thank you, Mr. Fowler. And um, the West Fort, do you have, you're going to repurpose that area from heavy industrial, you were saying? The property that is currently zoned heavy industrial is the 16 acre parcel that's in the county. I see. It's being added to this site. So the building will be on the portion that's currently in the city, mm -hmm. 10 acres. They'll acquire the 16 acres next door that's mostly floodplain, but there's enough there, as you see on the site plan, to put the big parking court, the truck court for the facility. Okay. Because I was trying to, I was getting confused driving around. And Destiny World Church is not very far from here, isn't it, Council Member Burdanley? I, I don't believe Back it is. I don't me? think it's in the area. Pastor Purvis, is, it's not that, okay. There, I got. I was all the way over there. No, ma'am. No, you're on yeah. the opposite side of the interstate. Okay. If you I turn left confused. before you get to Thornton Chevrolet, it's on that road. Okay. So if you get off I-20, Thornton Road, turn left before you get to the Chevrolet place. You'll see a bunch of car facilities on the right. Then you get toward the creek, mm -hmm. and that's where there this parcel is. begins. I got big yes, around. Okay. No questions then. I was all confused. Okay. Oh, thank you. Anyone else? Anyone have counsel have any questions of the applicant? Is there anyone here that would speak in favor of the application in addition to the comments of the applicant so far? Anyone here that would speak in opposition to it? Okay, seeing none, I would then close the public hearing, but I would just make a comment just to make sure that um, we're in the area so that the mayor the mayor is, is up to speed on it also. Um, this is bordered on the west, I believe you'd say by, is it the Dioxin building? Is that is that the building we're speaking of? Formerly the Nioxin building Nioxin. is now formed, owned by that company that I mentioned. Massive 380,000 square foot facility. Nioxin sold out probably five years ago. There's an active user in that building now, just to the east of Nioxin is this 10 acres yes. on which will be located the building. Okay. Um, and there is also, in addition to floodplain, there's also, it appears, a rather substantial uh, easement, sewer easement, that divides part of the property also. I think I remember seeing that, but Mr. Wintermeyer can answer yes, that sir. if you would like I, to hear from him. It's in the floodplain. I see it on the, I see it on the plat in the floodplain. Okay. Good enough. No other questions or comments? I'm going to close this portion of the public hearing then. And we will uh, take that up on Monday. Thank you all. Um, so then we go to item, that was L, correct? Yes, sir. We go to M. Consider a petition to annex 15.875 acres at 2084 Skyview Drive 
Land Lot 521, District 18, Section 2, Parcel 3, application by Thornton Way Auto Land. Ms. Patrice Williams. Patrice Williams, Community Development Director, 6701 Church Street. As the agenda item reads, this is the annexation for the previous item. Uh, we should, you should have a letter from the county, but there's no opposition. They've not stated any opposition to the annexation. Okay. okay. Questions, comments? Okay. We will have this then on Monday night as another item to consider, and we'll move on to item N. Hold a public hearing and consider a request for change in zoning from GC General Commercial District to Light Industrial District, LI, in the Quality Growth Development Overlay for 9.44 acres located Blairs Bridge Road in Landlot 581, District 18, Section 2, Parcel 2, and Landlot 616, District 18, Section 2, Parcel 1, application by Native Development Group, LLC. Ms. Williams. Patrice Williams, Community Development Director, 6701 Church Street. The applicant's narrative states that the purpose of this request is to develop a warehouse distribution center. The preliminary site plan provided by the applicant shows a 118,000 square feet warehouse on a vacant type trike of land located on Blairs Bridge Road. The applicant requests a rezoning under the City of Douglasville Unified Development Ordinance Section 12.08.05. The proposed amendment is consistent with the purpose and the intent of the UDL under Article 1. The current comprehensive plan shows this parcel as part of a regional activity center. However, light industrial zones are not one of the recommended uses by the regional activity center character area. However, the area in which the proposed project is undertaken is an area that is predominantly light industrial. The proposed amendment would be compatible with the existing environment. The rezoning to LI is compatible with the purpose and the intent of the most recent comprehensive plan. The properties located to the north and west of the subject property are currently functioning as light industrial. The vacant property to the south and east will remain PSP, public, semi-public. The existing light industrial uses in the vicinity of the subject property lends further credence that the proposed pro project would enhance the intent of the most recent comprehensive plan. The proposed project developed develops land that is currently best suited for light industrial use with a minimum impact or demand on city services. Thank you, Ms. Williams. The applicant is with us. Come forward, Mr. Mr. Fowler. Joe Fowler, Post Office Box, Douglasville, representing the applicant native development group and Mr. Joe McGorry, the representative, is here. As noted, the application is to rezone from general commercial to light industrial, a total of 9.45 acres off Blairs Bridge Road. To give you an idea about specifically where it's located, if you get off I-20, turn right onto Thornton Road, turn right onto Blairs Bridge, go down just past the four, let's see, it's 400,000 square foot facility built by IDI. This property is 200 yards further on on the right. And that's where it will be located. Mr. McGorry has a long history of development of projects of this nature. You heard from the staff that the proposed warehouse reasonably promotes public health, safety, and welfare. The Planning and Zoning Commission voted unanimously to approve it. Staff's concluded that the site is best suited for light industrial, which is predominantly what's in that area. Mr. McGorry and his engineer have been in touch with WSA concerning nearby floodplain. This is outside, obviously, of all of that, and it's been determined that the structure you see on the proposed site plan easily fits on the assemblage of properties that he has put together for this development. Mr. Corey has been in touch with staff representatives regarding access to the property and line of sight concerns because it is in a curve. He's available to talk about any conclusions that have been reached with respect to that, but it appears favorable with respect to a development of this nature, already has the tenant in mind, as I understand it. So we'd recommend and request approval. He will be able to respond to any questions you may have. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Fowler. Questions, comments, council, uh, Madam Mayor, anyone concerning this application? Is there anyone here that would speak in favor or in opposition? We seem to have completely uh, almost dilapidated or taken away all the audience. So is there anyone here that would speak either in support or opposition other than staff? Okay. We thank you all for coming in. We'll close the public hearing. If there are no other questions, then we will take that up on Monday. 
Thank you all. And last but not least, item O. Refer to the Planning Commission a proposed ordinance to amend section 6.03 of the Unified Development Ordinance to revise provisions relating to the flood hazard district and to amend the definition of new manufactured home park or subdivision in section 13.02 of said ordinance. Ms. Williams. Hey, Patrice Williams, Community Development Director, 6701 Church Street. This is just a referral to the Planning Commission. We've been contacted by uh, Ms. Emily Wingo. She's with the Georgia Department of Natural Resources, and she's requested that we do some updates to our UDO that falls in line with what state requirements are. And so we're asking that you refer this to the Planning Commission, and then it'll come back to you for approval. So basically a housekeeping item that we need to update. Questions, comments? Anyone? Is there any reason why we could not place this on the consent agenda for Monday? I tried. <laughs> Thank you all. And that, that's all that I have tonight under planning and development. Thank you, Madam Mayor. You're welcome. Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman. You did a wonderful job. You beat yourself by 10 minutes. You said 8 o'clock, and it's 7.50. We'll move on to item number 11, Public in Improvement and Beautification Committee. That's chaired by Councilmember Nicole Miller. Thank you, Madam Mayor. We do have the one item this evening, and where is that at? And that is to authorize the mayor to sign a lighting service agreement with Georgia Power Company for a lighting upgrade to 13, it says fixtures, I believe they're referring to street lights mm -hmm. on Miller's Street. Um, I know Greg really, really wanted to be here tonight, and he's missing us all dearly. Um, if you want to shorten your meeting on Monday, and if you all are good with the item, um, you don't have to have him present on Monday, Madam Chair. Okay. It is a housekeeping item from the standpoint that Georgia Power is uh, looking at places throughout the city where there are um, lighting deficits. So this is the proposal to put lighting on this street, LED. Those lightings would be, uh, the, the lighting would have to be paid for by us and we would have to sign a lighting agreement to make that happen. And from what I understand, it would uh, we're already paying like $250 a month for that section of lights, and so it's roughly about a $120 difference. Yes, ma'am. Um, to those of you who have been down through there, you may know it's, it's needed. Did you guys have any questions, though? I can try. We can text Greg. I, uh, Madam Chair, I did have a question. Is the savings passed on to the city? Because uh, I... Somebody, I won't say who, told me that that's not necessarily the case. It, it, there is an overtime saving. So um, as Madam Chair mentioned, there is a, a, a cost that you will incur um, on a monthly basis, but over time you should receive a savings because of the lighting efficiency. That may come from uh, maybe where those lights last so much longer, perhaps? Okay. Were there Okay, yes. Madam Chair, I had a question. So what's going to happen to the current fixtures? It will be replaced. Okay, that's good. Okay. My street is dark. Gotcha, and so then there are no additional costs. It's just in that in that monthly cost. Okay. Um, Ms. City Manager, were you saying that maybe we could put this on the consent agenda? I know you all love to hear Mr. Roberts speak, but consider <laughs> he has so many zoning items. It may help you all on Monday night. Uh, if you're satisfied with what you have provided and what I've provided, okay. we could. Oh, thank you. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> Any other questions then? Uh, yeah, you guys are good with that? Okay, <laughs> consent agenda then. Thank you. That's all I have. Thank you so much, Madam Chair. Public Relations Committee, that's chaired by Councilman Howard Estes. Thank you, Madam Mayor. We have no business this evening. Thank you, sir. Uh, Public Safety Committee, chaired by Councilmember Sam Davis. No items at this time, Madam Mayor. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Councilman Davis. Fourteen is Recreation, Culture, and Tourism Committee, and that's chaired by Councilmember Chris Watts. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, we're using up uh, several letters of the alphabet tonight in uh, <laughs> the uh, Recreation, Culture, and Tourism, but it's a little misleading, so I'll get right to it. Uh, item A, authorize the Parks and Recreation Director to submit a pre-application for funding from the Land and Water Conservation Fund for the Jesse, uh, Jesse Davis Park project. Yes, ma'am. Ms. Hardaway. Uh, good evening, Mayor and Council. Emily Hardaway, Graduate Fellow, 6695 Church Street. This item is in regards to a grant opportunity through Georgia Department of Natural Resources um, for Jesse Davis Park. 
This grant will be for design and engineering of the park area and green space of Jesse Davis Park. Initial concepts for these renovations were presented to you in the spring of 2019. Further designs will be presented to you at a later date. The grant is for $500,000, and should we be awarded the grant, we will provide a match of $250,000 for a project total of $750,000. We will leverage our SPLOS dollars allocated for Jesse Davis Park so that we are not dipping into the general fund to cover this match. The resolution attached is a requirement for the grant pre-application. Please let me know if you have any questions. Thank you. Uh, Madam Mayor, do you have anything? We need to hurry up and run to the, no. That's, <laughs> <laughs> this seems like a good grant. Um, and where's the, sus the suspense date to apply? Uh, October 31st. That's what I'm talking about. We have to run. Yes, ma'am. Um, we actually, we pretty much have the application mm -hmm. good to go. We're just waiting on one more last thing. So we should be able to get it in well before the deadline. Great. Thank you. And thank you for um, bringing this to our attention, City Manager. Mr. Landrum. Sounds like a great, great opportunity, and, and it's good to, when, when you hear that uh, we're, we're finally getting to the light at the end of the tunnel as far as getting going on Jesse Davis Park, that project, uh, that would be great. Um, uh, Councilman Davis, do you have any questions or comments? Taking it all in. Anybody else? Any questions or comments? I have a question. Chairman. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Um, Chairman Watts, just one question. How competitive is this grant? Do you know? Uh, that is something I'm not aware of, actually. Sorry. It's okay. That's the only question. Thank you. Thank you. And when when did you say the the uh, application had to be in by? October 31st. And then we would hear by, by the end of the year, or? Um, we'll hear, hear back by January. January. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Anything else? Uh, I'll just place this. Yeah, yes, Council Coach, Madden. and I, I apologize. I, I, I missed part of that. But did you say, uh, Ms. Hardaway, there is a match on this? Yes, sir. There is a 50% match. And so the project total we're applying for is 500000 So we'll pr be providing a $250,000 match. And it will be coming out of SPLOS funds that are allocated for Jesse Davis Park. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Coach. That's all. Okay, anything else? Before we move on all right we're going to place this on the consent agenda thank you Ms. Hardaway uh, item B appoint uh, count uh, councilman Howard Estes as post one member of the Douglasville Pu Public Art Commission for a term ending July 1st 2022 and uh, go ahead Ms. Jackson Chelsea Jackson 6695 Church Street good after good evening uh, Madam Mayor and Council, as you know, the post one member of the Douglasville Public Arts Commission must be a council member. Council member Howard Estes is the individual that would like to be appointed from Mayor and Council. And we appreciate uh, Councilman Estes mm -hmm. stepping up and uh, taking this on. And um, this is something we're voting on Monday. Yes, like I mean, can I put consent. it on the consent agenda? Oh, that sounds great. Uh, any questions? I've always anybody? wanted to be on the consent agenda. Sir? I've always wanted to be on the consent agenda. Have you? Okay. I, I just Before thought, he changes his mind. Let's do I, just, I just thought maybe he would want to see a vote, see who voted for him and who voted against him. But anyway, uh, okay, we'll place that item on the uh, consent agenda for Monday. Uh, item C, appoint Emmy Leitner as opposed to three member of the Douglasville Public Art Commission for a term ending July 1st, 2024. Anything on that, Ms. Jackson? Yes, Mr. Chair, thank you very much. As you know, post two, that member has to be a member of the Cultural Arts Council. That was brought before the Cultural Arts Council about two months ago, and they voted to nominate Ms. Emily Leitner for you to potentially appoint her to the Douglasville Art Commission. So she's she's agreed. We, get, we got her, okay. Yes, That's, sir. <laughs> all right, we'll put her on a consent agenda also. Thank you. Um, Item D, appoint Dennis Connolly as a post four member, Denise, uh, Dennis Connolly as a post four member of the Douglasville P Public Art Commission for a term ending July 1st, 2024. Thank you. As you all know, post four must be a member of the Historic Preservation Commission. They nominated Mr. Dennis Connolly to be um, potentially serve as the appointee. 
Any any questions? All right, that we'll put that on the consent agenda. Also, appoint Shirley Bayless as the post five member of the Douglasville Public Art Commission for a term ending July first, twenty twenty two. Miss Jackson. Yes, sir. Thank you. You you all interviewed Miss Bayless about. I would say two weeks ago regarding uh, being the city of Douglasville resident to serve on the post five um, post for the Douglasville Public Art Commission. And there are no other individuals that are interested on serving on that post. Thank you. Anybody questions or comments? Uh, I just I remember uh, all the folks that we've interviewed all had really great resumes mm -hmm. and and uh, I remember uh, being impressed with all of them. So that's great. All right. Item F appoint Monique. Carruthers as the post six member of the Douglasville Public Art Commission for term ending July 1st, 2024. I know I skipped E, but uh, I'll come back to that. I apologize. Or yes, did it? as it relates to Ms. Carruthers, same thing as post five. That individual must serve as a city of Douglasville resident for post six. You all interviewed Ms. Carruthers about two weeks ago as well. There are no other individuals that are interested in being appointed to this post. There are no questions. I will add Ms. Carruthers also to the consent agenda. And then item G, appoint Denise Overfield as a post seven member of the Dogsville Public Art Commission for a term ending July 1st, 2022. And we spoke with her tonight and uh, Ms. Jackson. Yes, sir. You all did interview her earlier today at your 5 p.m. meeting for the post seven post of the Douglasville Public Art Commission. There are no other individuals interested in being appointed to this post. Thank you. I'm just I'm happy that we found uh, that we've got all the spots except the downtown development. Authority. Yes, sir. Um, on the Tuesday meeting for the downtown development authority, they voted to um, table that item. And then once they get two more individuals on their board, they will okay. appoint, well, nominate an individual for you all to appoint. So whoever gets on that board last is probably going <laughs> to. More than likely. <laughs> anyway, thank you. Uh, so uh, item G, we will also add to the consent agenda. Thank you, Ms. Jackson. Thank you. And Madam Mayor, that's all we had tonight under Recreation, Culture, and Tourism. Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman. We'll move on to Technology Committee. That's chaired by Mayor Pro Tem, Terry Miller. But we'll ask the Vice Chair, Council Councilman Estes to take that committee while Mayor Pro Tem is returning. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Technology Committee has no business this evening. Thank you so much, Mr. Vice Chair. Transportation Committee, chaired by Councilmember Dr. LaShawn Burdanley. Thank you, Madam Mayor. We have two items okay. tonight. The first is to adopt the final draft of the pedestrian bicycle connectivity plan and transmit the plan to the Atlanta Regional Commission. Ms. McNally. Absolutely, April McCallum, Planning Manager, 6701 Church Street. Um, as you know, Mayor and Council, you reviewed this plan um, and received all recommendations on August the 17th of this year. Uh, we had a four week public comment period with no significant changes or alterations to the plan. So staff recommends adoption of this plan as is. Thank you. And if it's okay with the mayor and council, I'd like to put this under the consent agenda, unless there are any comments or questions. Okay. The next item is to adopt the Northside Trail Plan and transmit the plan to the Atlanta Regional Commission. Ms. McNally. Absolutely. April McCown, <coughs> Plan Manager, uh, 6701 Church Street. Uh, mayor and council reviewed this plan and uh, received recommendations on July 16th of this year. Uh, after a four week comment period, there was no significant changes made to the plan. And so staff is recommending adoption of this plan. Thank you. Do we have any questions or comments by our mayor council? I have one comment, Madam Chair. I wanted to um, congratulate Miss Mc April. McCown, like McCown, McCown Road down the street. McCown. You got it. <laughs> um, for um, being in this position, you know, you have large shoes to fill very. with Miss Wright. She was very, um, just ingratiated in transportation, she breathed it. So, um, but it looks like you're you're uh, transitioning well, and we uh, welcome you in, in the position. Look forward to working with you in this respect. Thank you, I appreciate that. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Are there any other comments? If not, I'd like to place this on the consent agenda as well. No other items under transportation, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, is there any other business to come before council this evening? Okay, um, Mr. Landrum, are you on the? Are you doing other business or a staff report? 
Okay. Yes, I was going to brag on you, but I'll let you, when you come up, I'll embarrass you when you get to the microphone. Um, I want to bring to the council's attention two emails that the city manager uh, sent to us just to uh, a general reminder. There was a question raised, and I raised one of the questions about one of our planning commission members that uh, was running for office, and just to be fair and equitable, bringing that conversation to the forefront. So Ms. Littlefield did make a uh, determination for us and sent it to the council members. Um, and outside folks asked questions as well because council member Miller was on the DDA and she resigned when she ran for city council member and I was on the zoning board and I resigned as an appointed official for the city when I ran for mayor in 2011. So, um, but her rendering is here. And then the other thing is the governor has extended his order, Governor Kemp, to November the 9th. And so we have been getting uh, many requests for uh, events, for special events for the fall and winter. And so um, our city manager has sent us some information about gathering of 50 persons or more, you know, with uh, social distancing. But there is something in the order that recommends that we can use the conference center. Uh, that we'll have a city manager if you want to expound upon that, but it's in the email as well. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, the executive order does allow for 50 persons or more if you have appropriate opportunity to social distance. Um, as far as conference centers and tourism events, there are no limits that the governor is mentioning. Um, some of you all know who watch sports. Um, for instance, if you watch uh, national football, there are they are having um, uh, fans at the stadium. So you see that that's part of his executive order. Um, but keeping in line with what I've heard from you all, that we're trying to slowly graduate to trying to move forward to holding the events, um, knowing that there's some uncertainty to what may happen in the fall during flu season, I would just ask that if you all would just talk uh, amongst yourselves to try to make a decision on what we want to do after this phase is over, possibly in the spring. We know it's going to be a ebb and flow type situation as we adjust, but this is the guidance that we will move forward um, under currently right now, which will allow us to really keep in line with what other jurisdictions are doing. Um, people are meeting, um, but trying to be very careful, very safe, and making certain that we are accountable to the citizens who may contact you who may not necessarily agree with the direction that we're going in. Thank you so much, City Manager. And I've gotten several emails and calls about why are we having in-person meetings in the county having uh, virtual still, but they are still allowed to have virtual meetings um, if they choose to based on the governor's order that's extended to November 9th. So uh, it's just, it was our choice to come back and socially distance and wear a mask as council uh, versus this, the county. Any other business to come before the board before council members, okay. If not, then we'll go on to updates from city staff or city attorney. Mr. Dotson seems to have stepped out. So our chief assistant city attorney, Ms. Susan Littlefield. No business at this time, thank you. You're welcome. Our chief of police, uh, Chief Sparks. How's it going, doctor? Doing good, uh, no business, Madam Mayor. Thank you, sir, it's good to see you. Our city manager, do you have anything for us? Um, yes, ma'am, just a couple things. Mm -hmm. And Travis is going to come up to make a report to you all regarding an update on the park in uh, Arbor Station. Uh, he did have some follow-up and just we need to find out what further direction you want all, us to go in. Um, I do need to make a correction on the dates from the email that I sent you all on your legislative priorities. That's for your November 12th and November 16th meeting. And thank you, um, Dr. Burdanley, for catching that error. But if you do have legislative priorities that you want staff to research, if you all can send those to me, and I'll be prepared to submit a draft uh, agenda to you all at your November 12th meeting. And December 3rd is the tentative date that has been set by the legislative delegation uh, to have a virtual meeting with the delegation. So it will be done uh, virtually. Um, the other is, um, in order to help out the clerks, we are asking that you make certain you have your iPads and that you're voting via your iPad so they can count your vote correctly. So it may take a little bit. She, the clerk will not vote for you. <laughs> so if you actually uh, don't have a vote, they're gonna call out and say, I did not get a vote from the particular elected official. So it may slow things down, but we're just asking. We know the system kind of takes a little bit, but if you can vote via your machine and make certain that you have your iPad with you so the clerk can get an accurate count. And then lastly, um, Chair for Mr. Watts, uh, the clerk did not get your consent for uh, Ms. Sherry Bayless. 
item uh, F, I'm assuming that you did want to put that on the consent yes. agenda. Yes, yes, I did. That's all I have. Madam okay. City Manager, could I ask the time on that December 3rd virtual? Do we, you know? we have not gotten it yet, and as soon as I get that agenda, I will send that out to you all. Thank you. Mr. Landrum, you want to come up and give your update? Good evening, Mayor and Council. Travis Landrum, 8830 Gurley Road, uh, Parks and Recreation Director. Uh, just to provide a follow-up from our conversation recently regarding Arbor Station, I did speak with the HOA President, Mr. Uh, Terry Standridge, and they uh, communicated that they would not be interested in moving forward uh, based off of the conversation and stipulations that we talked about. Um, they're not interested in selling or deeding the property to the city, and I don't think they're fans of having um, the additional traffic that would come through with it being a public park. So we followed up with that conversation today. All right. Thank you, Mr. Landrum. Mr. Landrum, what happened last week? You want to tell us? You didn't bring it with you today. It's like the Super Bowl ring. You left your Super Bowl ring at home. I do not have it with me. <laughs> um, but I actually, I'll make an effort to bring it along with the other recognition that we'll get next week also. But to your point, um, I was honored at the awards banquet for the state last week uh, where I received the Distinguished Professional Award uh, for the state. So um, I will bring that hardware with me um, here at a future meeting. And we will be recognized as the Class A Agency of the Year for District 5 in GRPA. And we will go and receive that recognition this coming Wednesday at the District Awards Banquet. So for the entire state of Georgia. Well, for District In the five. district, District yes, 5. We're, we're still striving for the state recognition, but okay. we'll, we'll take the baby steps. We'll be recognized on, for the district. I don't remember us and being recognized. Didn't, so this is great. <laughs> 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 Congratulations, Mr. Landrum. You're doing a wonderful job. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, we really appreciate that. If I could also add one, one last thing. Uh, we will have our hearing this coming Monday for the CAFRA accreditation. Uh, that will be a virtual hearing. Uh, It'll take place Monday at 1130. So at that time, we'll get confirmation of if we successfully achieved accreditation status. So I'll also provide that follow up. Wow. As well. Very good. Congratulations and a lot of hard work. We appreciate that. And congratulations on your award as well. Madam oh. Chair, I just had a comment for Mr. Yes, sir, I apologize. Uh, I didn't open yeah, the floor for uh, questions or just comments. contrary to popular belief. Nobody from Georgia had anything to do with uh, saving getting COVID. I don't think we really need to worry, but we're going to beat them on a the line of scrimmage anyway, Mr. Mr. Landers. Oh, my goodness. Well, I just posed the question uh, to <laughs> a, a, another fellow council member <laughs> earlier, so his response kind of tells me everything I need to know. So. <laughs> my goodness. <laughs> All right, thank you, Madam Mayor. I'm sorry. That's, that's okay. Um, count, Mayor Pro Tem, did you have a statement? Yeah, thank you, Madam Mayor. That follow up on Mr. Landrum's comments on uh, after. Uh, extensive discussion at the HOA meeting on Tuesday mm -hmm. evening regarding the uh, um, park system, parks in Arbor Station, yeah, the, the HOA sort, sort of came to the same conclusion that the City Council had about the, the complications of trying to deed land and so forth. So there, there is still, however, desire to put a park in Ward 1 to distinguish it from Arbor Station, but not on any of the land or a, uh, any of the land open space controlled by Arbor Station HOA, just to keep it simple. But there are several options that they would like to explore with that are still within Ward 1, uh, but that would be in, in land outside of the HOA. So okay. we'll, we'll come back at a future time when we start, as we explore that option a little more, uh, in a little more detail. So um, thank you for that. Mr. Uh, uh, Vice Chair, um, I mean, Mr. Chairman, um, the, the big rock on Bright Star Road that we bought a few years back, is that in Ward no, it's out, actually I believe it's outside the city. That's in the county. Because, I mean, we're in an annexation mood, and I was just wondering when we were going <laughs> to annex that big rock. We have to go through about 20 properties to get to that. <laughs> uh-uh. Oh, no? Okay. I, just, I wasn't sure if it was in Ward 1 or uh, Ward 2. So. Okay. Not quite. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other comments from Mr. Landrum? Thank you so much, right, Travis. We appreciate you. Um, the other staff report, uh, Ms. Littlefield is a citizen request to donate a sidewalk easement to the city for property at the front of Station Lock Works. And that was Council Member Adams. Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> We've had a request from uh, citizen Barry Oliver 
uh, to uh, put a sidewalk in front of Station Loft Works. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's a rather complex uh, matter, more than it sounds like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I hate to keep you late, but I'm going to. Uh, a, a couple of years ago, uh, we had a, a citizen who parked in front of Station Loft Works, mm -hmm. and you can do there. He got out of her car and immediately slipped and fell because there's a huge difference uh, in the, uh, the height of the pavement there. Uh, she sued the city, <coughs> and we answered by saying, hey, we don't own that. It's not actually a sidewalk. It's a driveway. Station Loft Works owns that. She sued them. <coughs> we got summary judgment, and I don't know where they went with the lawsuit, whether they settled or she took judgment against Station Loft Works. But there is, in fact, no sidewalk right there. That's a private driveway. That's where the city sidewalk ends. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the reasons there's not a sidewalk there is it's a very challenging topo. Uh, Mr. <laughs> well, Mr. Dodson asked me to tell you he sees no advantage to the city taking it. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you do want to put a sidewalk there, there are a couple of things that I recommend. One is that you get an engineer to tell you whether that can safely happen or not. Uh, one person has already fallen and had an injury there, uh, so I don't know if we can make a sidewalk that's going to be safe, too. If you put a sidewalk there because of the topo, you may very well create a flooding problem. Uh, the street is high, and then the driveway has a tiny little ditch in it, and <coughs> then Station Loft Works is, is about level with that. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's prone to flooding. Uh, if you have money for a sidewalk, I would say that you, you definitely need to get an engineer's opinion before you proceed. Anyway, uh, Station Loft Works would like for you to build a sidewalk there <laughs> and want to give you an easement. And we told him he would, we would bring you that request. And I will um, add, Madam Mayor, um, Mr. Oliver has made this request um, for some time to come, so I just mentioned to him the easiest thing to do is for him to put it in writing and send it to me and therefore afford it to Ms. Littlefield. I would say my recommendation uh, would be that um, that you all would take a look at your sidewalk plan mm -hmm. that you've just spent a tremendous amount of money on and <coughs> utilize placement of sidewalks through that plan versus um, at the request for purposes like this unless you just deem that it is um, a particular need. But when you look at the funding and the cost, um, I, I think that you want to follow suit with the plan that you have just um, worked on with AECOM rather than just uh, choosing a sidewalk. That would be my recommendation. Thank you so much, um, City Manager and Ms. Littlefield. Now, I know from WSA a lot of times when we get these requests, they do give recommendations to private citizens. Do, would we do that for we don't have an engineer on staff that okay. would be able to provide him that type of recommendation. Um, it would he would probably have to, as Ms. Littlefield just said, just like someone. we would have to hire an engineer. Okay. The council have any comments or you know think about it or talk to the city manager privately. Okay, we'll do that. Thank you so much for the report. Uh, do we have any? We're at our item twenty comments from citizens and delegates. Do we have anyone that? is left over in the meeting that wants to speak. It looks like it's all staff, but we still open the floor for comments from citizens and delegates. If so you have five minutes to come forward, or if you're on the line, do we have anyone that's on uh, virtual that wants to talk to us, city manager? Assist assistant city manager, okay. If not, then we don't have any other business to come before council tonight. This meeting is adjourned. <laughs>